ENT is genuinely super easy. It's very simple. It's like very interesting. It's very clinically oriented. So within just 30 months, so, <laughs> so within just 30 days of your postings, you can genuinely be done with your ENT completely. But I'm not really the best person to be talking about ENT in this room because I got a distinction, but I personally know that I don't really deserve it because I studied really well during the postings, but then during the exam time, due to some personal problems, I wasn't really able to focus on ENT. So, so getting distinction, I should call it pure luck this time. So this time I have brought someone else who had actually put in some efforts. So here I am introducing my good friend and my classmate, Bharat Nivas. Yeah, hello. So in this video, we'll be looking at all the resources you should be using for ENT and along with that, how to actually score well in ENT how to be studying ENT and everything you need to know about ENT will be seen in this video. So first of all, we will talk about the most important stuffs in this video, which is the resources. What are the resources you should be using for ENT? So according to me, I used just Maro, like Maro was my only resource. I didn't use anything else. I bought Dingra. I don't know why I bought Dingra. I didn't even uh, touch it because I felt like Maro was more than enough. Everything I needed to know was in Maro. But few important questions were missing in Maro. So for that, I had to go with uh, uh, Dingra. So now I'll pass on the mic to Bharat and uh, let him also give you some insights on what can be done better and what you should be doing. Yeah, as he said, Maro is really good for ENT, but still it misses a few important questions you needed for university examinations. And, uh, and also it misses a few points which you need for NEET examinations or next, as they say. So basically you got three books for uh, three main books for ENT. One is uh, Dingra and another one is KK Ramalingam and the third one is uh, Hazarika. But uh, when you ask in the department, they will most probably suggest you KK Ramalingam and uh, uh, Hazarika. But uh, if you see Dingra is actually very good than these two books. But KK Ramalingam edges a bit, but it will be a tough, uh, it'll be a bit tougher for you to learn. Yeah, so I completed the entire uh, ENT Marrow videos and it's very good for uh, ENT examinations. But still, if you need to understand a still better and if you need to get all the points, grasp it, you need to study books. And uh, I personally would suggest Dingra and uh, I even spoke to many PGs in ENT department and they even suggested Dingra for uh, UG examinations. So now we'll go to the next question that is how to use postings properly. And uh, in my case, during the postings, I was in my personal best form. So I spent like my time very productively. I'll go to the postings in the morning. I'll look at the cases and immediately after looking at the cases, I'll be going through the book or I'll be going through Marrow, which is my primary resource. I'll be going through Marrow only because I'll be having my phone with me all the time. So I'll immediately go through Marrow. I'll be looking at the uh, whatever the symptoms and signs that are given in Marrow and I'll try to elicit them. I'll try, I'll try to elicit the signs in the patient so that I can, you know, immediately understand and, you know, keep, keep in my mind what they're actually, what is actually given in Marrow. So that really helped me a lot. So for example, if I'm seeing a case of tinnitus, I'll be asking all these stuffs that are given in Marrow. And once I'm done with the classes, I'll go home and then I'll be watching Marrow videos and then I'll be solving the MCQs right then and there. But I wouldn't really say I had been solving the MCQs right then and there. Like I used to watch a video today and then I might be solving the MCQs two days or three days later. It is basically to just improve your uh, memory. Uh, so I link this video of active recon space repetition up somewhere here. So check this out. So in that video, I have explained about why you should be spacing out your uh, studies. So now we'll ask this guy about what he did in postings that got him his course. Yeah, I wasn't as crazy as he was during postings, but I wish I was because the things about uh, the things that he said about uh, watching the marrow videos and eliciting the signs and uh, asking about the symptoms to the patients was really good. Uh, but still, I tried my best. Yeah, what I did in the first week of posting is I tried to complete all the practical examination cases, the chronic tonsillitis, carcinoma of maxillary sinus, deviated nasal septum and chronic separative otitis media. So once you finish this, they will mostly ask you questions up only about these four topics mainly in the ENT postings. Yeah, you won't feel like uh, you are like spaced out and you are very dejected from the subject. So if you first know these four things mainly, so you can uh, actually uh, answer all the questions that they are asking. So you will know that uh, you have studied a bit, you know things, things about what they are saying and obviously those are the signs and symptoms that they will be teaching you about. But uh, first of all, before going to the postings, you must completely know about uh, the anatomy of ear, nose and throat. 
so that's very that's the most important thing so you might have to revise your anatomy again if you have forgotten about it uh, but i recommend you re revise it again because you might not know it as well as you think you might know would you like to add something more rohit and thank god i studied anatomy really really well during my first year so i i sort of knew the entire anatomy of uh, uh, external ear middle ear internal already in first year so i simply had to revise the notes because once you're done with the anatomy and physiology everything else will just fall right into place it'll be super easy so that's one really good point from uh, bharat and as he told i was actually crazy during the postings i was like i should be completing ent within this 30 days but revision is super duper important i did stuffs super at the start but towards the end i didn't really revise i know that we have talked about the resources we used already those are the mainstream resources are there any additional extra something special resources so in my case it will be youtube i saw all the surgical uh, videos in youtube so i literally didn't have to you know study the text given in dingra i just knew the steps just by myself i knew what is this procedure i because i watched the video so i know so i can definitely write something about it and uh, I'll give the mic now to Bharat. Let him add something more to this. Yeah, so when it comes to other resources, so the primary resource is actually Marrow and the book I suggest is Dhingra. So the other resource you must use is KK Ramalingam. So you don't, you don't need to completely finish KK Ramalingam per se because it's exactly the same as Dhingra when it comes to the points. But at the end of the book, there are some key points in it, which if you learn, you can, you can know that extra edge knowledge, which you require for any... Uh, quizzes you might attend so basically i use this extra resource only because of the quiz i attended uh, so when it comes to kk ramalingam at the back of the books there are around uh, 500 to 600 mcq questions so these mcq questions are uh, uh, very much related to test your knowledge per se it won't make you think as much as when it comes to clinical knowledge but uh, when it comes to your uh, whole mugging up things or uh, uh, per se knowing the things from the book it's very useful in revising stuff from it but there are extra edge informations in it as i earlier said the key points but if you not if you want to uh, get some really thinking kind of questions clinical kind of questions this review book for dingra written by dr sakshi arora you might know her from their og videos in marrow yeah uh, she is an ogician but still her ent review book is really good uh, so if you learn dingra and then use this as a review book you will kind of know all the points there are points which are not in dingra still in sakshi arora and what's great about Sakshi Arora are the MCQ questions and the explanations given to it. So uh, the MCQ questions will really make you think about a few steps. You might know that uh, this is the straight straight away point for a, for a question, but still there might be an uh, exceptions and all those kind of questions will be given in that that book. Yeah, almost. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, I don't know much about Mara MCQ, so I'll give my and I, I have personally seen him solve a lot of things. In a bundle, three things, yeah. Yeah, but the music is out there. Yeah, I'm looking for the blue. Uh, I don't know much about Marrow MCQs though, but I have seen Rohit solve a lot of uh, Marrow MCQs daily, so I'll pass on the mic to him. So, yes, I actually put a lot of efforts in solving Marrow MCQs. I have almost completed uh, Marrow MCQs, and uh, my strategy of solving Marrow MCQs is very simple. Whenever you get time, you solve Marrow MCQs, period. So, for instance, if I'm having a class by 2.30 and if the professor is going to be coming late by another 15 minutes, I, I have 15 minutes with me. I can solve a module now. In 15 minutes, I can solve a module. <laughs> so, so, that was my strategy. I never used to sit down and focus and I, I, I never have been like, I'm going to be solving Marrow MCQs now. Never. Whenever I get free time, I'll just hop on to Maram and solve them. So this is like a very good idea for you. You can also follow the same. You don't really have to sit in and focus on Maram MCQs. You can just be solving them. Maram MCQs are very, very good. If you're just watching the videos and if you're not solving the Maram MCQs, you're missing on a lot of stuffs because the questions alone will give you extra insight. I was able to solve the MCQs in my exam solely because of the Mara MCQs that I have attended earlier. Mara MCQs will be very clinically oriented. So they'll also help you in looking at the patients in your postings. It'll help you clear concepts. That's the best part. And this is where your brain starts to work. You'll be like, what did I miss? You'll start thinking on it. You'll go back to the video. You'll go back to the Ingra. You'll study on it. So this is how I used to solve Mara MCQs and it really helped me 
So please let me tell this to you again. If you're not solving bare MCQs, at least with regard to ENT, you are missing a lot of stuffs. So now I'll be talking about the most important part of this video. This is a part that most people skip. You should be knowing someone's goals before you look at their actions. Why am I doing this? Why is someone doing this? It's all because of the goals. I have different goals. He might be having different goals. So I might be going on a, on a completely different path. And this guy might be going on a completely different path. It's not like I am wrong and he's right. It's not like he is wrong and I, or I am right. It depends on your goals. So coming to the goals, my goal with regard to ENT was very simple. I, I wanted to get a distinction in ENT. That is like my goal for entire year. Like, you know, with every single year, I want to get distinction in at least one subject. That's simply for my self-confidence and uh, survival. So I'll, I wanted a distinction. And then I wanted to be able to solve MCQs in my future uh, need uh, PG exam or next exam, whatever that is coming. So this was my goal. So for that, Marrow was more than enough. I was able to solve previous year MCQs. I was able to get distinction also. So my goals were aligned with Marrow properly. So I just watched all the Marrow videos, studied it. That's all through it. Simple. I didn't really focus on Dhingra. I just had to go through some of the important questions in Dhingra. So this was my goal. So now I'll ask Bharat what his goals were. So that you can understand why he's doing stuff differently. And you should also think about your goals. And you should decide on what you should be doing. As he clearly said, a goalless path is not a path at all. So you must know what is your final destination. That's when you will set your paths correctly. And yeah, he said about our goals being different. Yeah, it's entirely different actually. I'm actually uh, very much interested in doing uh, ENT PG. So I looked into stuff that many people might not know about ENT. Uh, when it comes to extra clinical stuffs, like uh, when the cases are rare, I, may, I will go to the ward. I mean, uh, during postings, I used to go by 8 a.m. And from 8 a.m. to 8.30, I will stand in the OP uh, before the professor arrives for the 8.30 a.m. class. And yeah, my goal was to clear, uh, get a distinction in ENT. Yeah, I got it. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. But and then, uh, uh, yeah, as he said, uh, it's also for the neat PG because uh, many questions will come from ENT. So my third goal is getting a PG seat in uh, ENT. So for that, what I did was see some extra cases which uh, a few others might not have done. Uh, you know, those rare syndrome, syndromic cases which comes to a hospital. So those will be interesting cases if you see them. Like it won't be useful when it comes to exam point of view in university, uh, university point of view. But if you really need to get your get knowledge about a subject and uh, if you're aiming to study for uh, neat PGs or next PG from third year itself, this, this syndromic learning, the syndromic cases learning and uh, seeing uh, cases that usually don't present will help you in thinking, uh, thinking about clinical steps. So until now, we have spoken about things which we do before university examinations. So when it comes to the actual examination, paper presentation is a very important thing. And uh, Rohit, I remember you doing a video about uh, paper presentation. Can you add something more specific in regard to ENT paper presentation? ENT is basically just anatomy. If you know how to present your anatomy paper, you know how to present the ENT paper. You have to be drawing a lot of diagrams. Everything is just diagrams, even in short notes, essays, essays, make sure that you draw at least four diagrams coming to short notes, at least, at least one diagram and try to put flow charts here and there about whenever it comes to, you know, the pathology and coming to any, if there is any histological diagrams, definitely draw it. So that is this maxillary carcinoma. That's a, that is, that is an important question. Very, very simple histology diagram. You can just draw it within just one minute. So it wouldn't really take a lot of work also. So you just have a draw histology diagrams. So it's basically just anatomy paper. Uh, what do you think, uh, like, do you think it's just anatomy paper or uh, do you want to add something more? Yeah, when it comes to time management, you know, this is a minor subject, but still you need to write it for 100 marks. But I don't think we both had a problem. Like I completed the uh, 45 minutes before the allotted time. And I remember Rohit saying he too completed it uh, around 40 to 45 minutes before the allotted time. So from uh, when you think about uh, consuming uh, time consuming drawings and stuffs it it won't matter because as he said histology and uh, other diagrams when you draw for ENT you know you don't need to be very specific when uh, like when it comes to anatomy you need to label parts each and every part it doesn't need to be so specific but if you can like give a picture about what what you know about it 
uh, when it comes to, uh, for example, yeah, uh, the only example I can uh, uh, currently think of is uh, deviated nasal septum. So uh, uh, if you draw about uh, draw an anterior rhinoscopy picture, you will convey to the examiner that you know about the practical stuff, also about the theory stuff. When you draw it, they will know that you understood, you really understood the topic and then did it. As he said, ENT paper is just like presenting anatomy paper. So what I did this year that was different from my other year paper presentations was writing it in two pens, black and blue pen and also using the pencils so often. The examiner corrects around 10 to 15 papers a day uh, after going to their hospitals and stuff. So they might uh, rush on to things. They, they will just see it in the overview. So if you present it as para paragraphs, it might be harder for them to locate the points, locate your keywords. You might be knowing all the keywords. You might be writing it, everything in your paper, but it, it, it really comes to how the examiner sees your paper. So if you write it as points, they might very clearly say it that you've written, this is the keyword. This is the keyword for this question and they will give you the marks. So the getting marks will finally come how much you impress the examiner. Uh, so that's how you do it. You present your paper well, you get very good marks. Underlining is very important. That's something I followed, forgot to mention earlier. I underline all the keywords in my questions very neatly. I made sure that the examiner sees that one single word. He gives me the mark and just moves on. I don't want him to see any, any other thing. He just has to see the words, tick, see the diagram, tick, see the flowchart, tick. Okay, three marks, get lost. We'll go to the next question. This is how I wanted it to go. So underlining is very important. And one more thing. See, I personally feel like marks don't matter. I am the kind of guy who generally feels like marks don't matter. But of course, if I get distinction, I feel happy. So what I'm saying is that the aim of getting marks is good. It's a very good aim because if you need more marks, you simply have to study more, isn't it? If you have to start, so studying more is good only. So it's good to have an aim of studying more knowledge at the end of the day, knowledge is all that matters, but marks will definitely give you the self-confidence. Because if you get this distinction, you'll definitely feel good. That's what maybe even if it's for a second, because this time when I got a distinction, the happiness lasted for maybe a minute, but that was kind of nice only. And I'm posting this video about the distinction on YouTube. And this guy is also sitting here because he got a distinction. So it's nice now. So maybe this could be a reason why you can get a distinction. So I guess we have come to the end of this video. Um, ENT is just super easy, 30 days, marrow. And if you want to go further, you can check out the books that he mentioned. But if you're asking just me, marrow is more than sufficient. If you, if your focus is just the university exams and if your focus is NEET or next PG, whatever. So I hope this video was useful and I really have to thank uh, him for uh, joining here. Even though he's my friend, I have to be grateful because he came all the way here and he put on this uh, shirt in the middle of the night and uh, joined here. So it's very nice of him. So thank you so much Bharat for uh, spending your time here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rohit. Bye. Yeah, thank you. I had a great time spending it. I had a great time sitting here and making this video. Yeah, thank you, Rohit. I had a great time making this video. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Rohit. I had a really great time making this video. Yeah, I asked him to say this. But uh, I really hope he had a good time here and uh, thank and it's really good that he is he has come to my home after three years of spending time together. <laughs> 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 yeah, and also this video has become a reason he came to my home. I have asked him to come to my home for like the last three years, but only now he has come. So that's also good. So if you have any doubts, uh, feel free to, you know, uh, comment in the comment section. I will also comment and I'll also ask him to reply to if you have any other doubts. So I guess this is bye-bye. See you.